Well, hello and welcome YouTube friends and uh, thank you once again for tuning in uh, to the latest video here from TroutStrike.com. Today I have in the vise a Rainbow Warrior or at least a version of the Rainbow Warrior. I tie this in a couple of different ways. Uh, today we're going to be tying it as a jig style fly. It's typically tied on a curved hook but today we're going to tie it on a jig style. I have found it to be very effective both ways. And uh, we're going to be tying it in the traditional, uh, with the traditional red underbody. Uh, just know that this, this is a pretty versatile pattern. Like a lot of the patterns that I tie, you can do a lot. Once you understand how to tie the pattern, you can make a lot of different variations to it. So uh, the version we're going to tie today is the original color scheme, and I'll go through the materials. We are going to be tying it on a 16 with a size 16 hook with a 2.8 millimeter bead. So before we get started, I will go through the materials with you just so that you know everything that we're, we're using here. Uh, first thing we're going to have here is our thread. This is UTC 70 uh, in red. And uh, you can change this up. I would recommend using the 70 denier though uh, for this size of fly. Some of the other colors that I use uh, for this, for the underbody, I'll use uh, same thing in purple. And I will often uh, use the, uh, the orange color as, as well. Um, I'm looking for that in my, in my thread uh, box here, but here it is. Uh, this is uh, in orange. So depending on whatever color thread you use for the underbody uh, because the tinsel that you're using uh, and this I would keep consistent uh, I would say the pearl tinsel in size large is a pretty essential part for this fly I like the large you can tie it with the smaller sizes I like the larger sizes though uh, you can see the width of it and the reason uh, I like that is for durability. It just it just makes the fly much more durable. Lance Egan talks about that in his video uh, that he does on the Rainbow Warrior. But again, this is a UTC pearl tinsel. Uh, that I would try to stay consistent. The other thing I would try to stay consistent with on this fly is the uh, is the dubbing material, and I'll share that with you. I like the Wopsy. Uh, I have the hairline in the Rainbow dubbing but i do for this fly like the wopsy it's a little bit more of a supple material and it and it gets down into a tighter uh, noodle for you when you dub it so again those are two materials i definitely would recommend uh, for this fly and then in terms of the tail uh, typical coke de leon you can use pheasant tail here uh, you can you know you can use other tailing materials i don't know how important that is uh, i think the original pattern used a pheasant tail but i tend to use uh, coke de leon for uh, a lot of my flies in this style so all right we're going to go ahead and, and get started i'm going to take this one out of the vise quick and i'm going to going to get us started with a 16 jig style uh, competition hook that means it's a barbless a smooth smooth shank and and barbless hook these come out of uh, the fish's mouth real easy and they also come out of your net real easy uh, which is nice they don't get tangled in there especially if you have uh, a, a rubber net so first thing i'm going to do is just make sure i get my bead in there the right way um, that's one thing you want to just make sure i'll show you the, the right way and the wrong way so the the slot of the bead if you're using a slotted bead uh, you want the smaller part of that slot yeah, it turned up if you if you have the slot and it looks like that uh, it's upside down if you get to the end of the fly and you realize that you've tied it upside down uh, don't worry the trout will still eat your fly but um, for uniformity and for them to line up right in your box uh, try to get the bead on there uh, the slotted bead the right way so and just pay attention to it as you're tying so the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to get some thread wraps uh, down the shank of the hook and we're not going to put a lot of bulk in it uh, we're just going to flatten our thread and uh, and get down to the bend of the hook where we let that hang okay and again meanwhile i am just keep keep checking on that 
that bead so that it doesn't it doesn't turn around on you. Uh, some people like to lock the bead in with a piece of wire or glue it down. Um, I generally don't do that. I just make sure it's lined up at the end when I tie it off and then it, it settles in there. So uh, I am going to take more fibers than I normally would for my tail because this Fly was, is typically used, uh, the tail materials a lot of times is, is pheasant tail. Those tend to be a little thicker. Uh, so I, I will use more Coke de Leon than I, than I normally do. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie that in with, with just two before I check it out. And I do not like the way that looks at all. So I'm gonna take it off. Um, I don't edit these. So um, if I make a mistake or I do something I don't like, uh, I just keep it in there because um, you probably make mistakes when you're tying and uh as well and and that's okay that's how we learn so i'm gonna i'm gonna actually kind of start over uh, i just i didn't like the tips of that cluster that i just cut out of there i didn't feel like they were even so i'm gonna try that again and uh, i'm gonna put them in here now i'm gonna do uh just a, a pin trap come back a little bit further i'm gonna do a pin trap I'm going to do two turns. Now, I'm not going to lock it in there because, as you can see, uh, my tail is way too long. So I'm going to pull back, get it to a point where I like it, and then I'm going to lock it in. Okay. I'm going to press up on that a little bit. And I'm going to come all the way up to the bead. And as I like to do... Just make sure my bead is set properly. Got it flipped back now. And I like to get the Coke de Leon right in that bead. And that way it's very, very satisfying to come up and give it a nice even snip. Just like that. Now for the next part, I'm going to take the tinsel. And I'll show you uh, how I, I, I cut that on an angle. So I'm going to just snip a piece off here and I'll show you. I like to cut it with a point so that I can put that point right in the bead. And if you take a look at that, see how I cut that uh, at a point. So I'll turn that over and I'm going to set that right into the slot of the bead. I'm going to come down. I'll try that again. And I do apologize. I'm, I'm trying to tie again with the camera in front of me, which is a little bit awkward for me. Uh, you can't really see that on the video, but um, and also the lighting is a little different for me because I find when I shine the light down directly on the fly like I normally would, uh, it, it kind of uh, creates a glare and makes it harder for you to see. So I'm actually tying um, by looking at uh, my phone screen here that I'm videoing from, which is a kind of a new experience. So anyway, enough about my troubles. Uh, what you want to do now is you want to bring that, that red thread down and give a counterclockwise split spin. And when you want to come back, you want to make sure you get the whole shank of the hook covered in whatever color you're using. All right. And then I'm going to just pull the bobbing over and hanging on the cradle and that as well will lock that bead into place so i've got my i've got my tinsel and now i'm going to use my rotary feature i'm going to pull on that nice and tight on a slight angle and i'm going to make sure i avoid that sharp hook point and i'm going to just bring that up right to the back of the bead to create the body of the fly now I'm going to rewind my thread up so I don't have so much thread to manage. Um, and I'll bring that up just like that. Now I'm going to come around here and tighten that down. And I'm going to do two turns in front and then I'm going to do one behind. Now notice I'm keeping this there because I'm going to use that for my shell backing here uh, for the wing case. So I'm gonna create a little bit of a thread base right behind and you can build up a little bulk. I know I'm always talking about not building bulk up, but 
uh, and build a little bit there. And now I'm going to take some of the dubbing and uh, just a small piece there and I'm going to just dub a thin noodle of this rainbow dubbing. And uh, I, I will let this get a little bulkier than I, I normally would because I'm going to be bringing that I'm going to be bringing that tinsel back down over it, uh, which will kind of compress it a little bit. So, um, okay, I've got my noodle. I'm going to tighten up my thread. That's important. I try to manage as little thread as possible. And now I'm going to create my collar and I want to come right to the back of the bead and now I'm going to take the tinsel and I'm going to pull that down I'm going to come over one time I'm going to come around one more time keeping tension on that thread now I'm going to peel that back and I'm going to come one more time now here's a little uh, little tip that I learned when you're cutting off the tinsel do not just come in there with your scissors and clip it. Just take the point of your scissors and try to get as close as you can and just cut a tiny little bit and then pull it. And that will actually make it a little cleaner and you won't see the tag hanging out. All right, so the next thing uh, that I do wanna do is I'm gonna add, for durability, I'm gonna add a little bit of UV resin onto my thread. Uh, that'll do two things. That's going to create uh, some durability. It's going to adhere uh, my knot and it's also going to give my knot, uh, my red knot, a little bit of sheen to it. So I'm going to go ahead now. One, two, three, four, and oh heck, we'll do five. We'll, we'll get crazy here. Do a five turn whip finish and then uh, I'm going to cut that off. And then the last step would just be to hit that with the uh, infinity light. And you can see how it's kind of buggy looking. Um, you know, you can leave it like that if you want. If, you, if those stray fibers really, really bother you, then um, go ahead and snip them. Notice how you really, they don't stand out until that light comes on and then you, then you really see them. Uh, th those can be great. Um, you can leave them on there, you can trim them off. Uh, I'll trim them off just, just to make it pretty, but to be honest, uh, this fly might fish a little better with some of that buggy looking on it. But anyway, um, this is the, the Rainbow Warrior. Uh, tie it up, practice tying it with uh, some different colors underneath, uh, the orange, the purple. I've even done it in an olive or a green. Uh, it's a great fly. It, it works for wild fish, stock fish, uh, really just, it's an attractor that uh, I think will work for you on most days out on the water. So again, thanks for watching. Make sure you get out and check out troutstrike.com and uh, I'll see you again soon. If you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day and get out on the water.